investigation into sexual exploitation in Newcastle. Andrew Norfolk is the Times journalist who uncovered the original scandal in Rotherham. He joins us now from Leeds. Uh, and I have to say, hundreds of victims involved in this. How was it that nobody within the community reported exactly what was going on to the police? Um, there's been a long-standing history of failure to acknowledge, failure to report, failure to tackle in towns and cities uh, the length and breadth of, uh, of England. Um, Newcastle was no exception there. Um, it, it's merely realised what was going on rather later than, than many other places. And I spoke to a local councillor earlier who is a Muslim himself. He said, as a Muslim, he has received a lot of abuse for speaking out on this subject. Uh, do you think certain groups are now being blamed for what's gone, even though, of course, it was a minority uh, that's been convicted? Well, we, we've gone from a position where, uh, in the first years, we were reporting about this and suggesting there was a hidden crime pattern that needed to be acknowledged and then tackled. In those early days, every time we wrote about this, we were accused of racism. Um, the step forward in Newcastle seems to be that finally everybody who, who speaks on this subject seems to acknowledge that there is a particular issue with a small subsection of men within the South Asian community, predominantly Pakistani Muslim heritage. Um, and it, it has to start the hard questions about this have to start. Now, of course, it's hugely difficult for other members of that community who, for whom such crimes are abhorrent to feel that they are being somehow tarred with the same brush. It's, it's a community that already feels under siege in many ways for issues such as terrorism, etc. And um, uh, it, it's always going to be difficult when such questions are asked against a community that feels demonised. But unless we ask those questions, unless we really try to understand why this pattern has put down such deep and damaging roots across the country, then we will never actually understand why these men think they have a right to treat young girls like that in the way they do. All we will be doing is picking up the pieces when the next case comes along, wherever it's going to be in England, picking up the pieces of damaged lives instead of actually taking the action that will prevent these men doing it in the first place. Well, staying with that theme then, it has been suggested in the past, hasn't it, that uh, this sense of institutional political correctness has really hampered police investigations. Do you think that is the case with investigations like this? Well, it, 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 it is inescapable that in a, in a case like the Rotherham scandal, um, frontline street workers who were working with, with girls who were, who were suffering these crimes were reporting to their bosses, they were writing reports, and they were being told to remove the word Asian from a, as a description of the perpetrators. Um, there was a widespread terror among not just police forces, but within local authority, social services department, of somehow treading into a cultural minefield. Uh, that, that for too long hampered um, these crimes being investigated properly. Um, it, 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 it is a step forward that nobody seems to be denying anymore that there is an issue here. And what do you make of the criticism